I'm here with Jennifer Cole to discuss her article, A Multifaceted Stewardship Intervention Helps Curb Steroid Overprescribing in Hospitalized Patients with Acute Exacerbations of COPD, which has been awarded the Literature Award for Innovation in Pharmacy Practice. In healthcare, we are familiar with antibiotic stewardship efforts. Why and how did you implement a stewardship framework to inpatient steroid prescribing for patients with acute exacerbations of COPD? Yes, excellent questions. And yet the idea of stewardship can be applied to multiple drug classifications. And as you've just pointed out, the majority of us are most familiar with antibiotic stewardship. But there have also been successful stewardship interventions described with opioids and proton pump inhibitors. The common denominator among these efforts is that stewardship implementers should focus on practice that is based in limited evidence and could pose potential harm for patients. So as far as how to build a framework where previously there was none, the most pragmatic approach would be to first describe, to extrapolate literature um, that's been previously shown to be effective. So in this case, borrowing from antimicrobial stewardship Research suggests that education-only approaches are likely to be less effective and a multifaceted approach should be used. Additionally, stewardship implementers should focus on a specific disease state, and in this case, it was COPD, to better define goals and progress. Support from facility leadership has been shown to be very important in stewardship efforts, as well as taking into account the needs and barriers that may be specific to your institution. And then finally, ongoing reminders for sustainability and monitoring progress are important components of any new stewardship project. So to move on to your question of why steroids? Well, first off, it's been well documented for several years that steroid overprescribing in COPD is well reported among many healthcare facilities. And we found this to be true at my facility as well. This was actually a resident project and this served as our initial needs assessment. Second, steroids and COPD, it falls into that common denominator we just mentioned, and that real world practice are often based on very limited evidence and could pose potential harm for patients. And there are multiple record, uh, reports indicating that in patients with COPD treated with higher steroid doses see no clinical benefit, but often experience more side effects and longer durations of stay compared to those treated with lower doses. So this really felt like an optimal framework for a stewardship intervention. How could these interventions be implemented in other practice settings? Well, I am so glad you asked because I do feel these interventions are readily implementable in any inpatient setting, and we used a three-prong approach. So after establishing an objective baseline needs assessment, our first intervention was an anonymous survey for providers consisting of a simplified case of a COPD exacerbation. And we simply asked them, which steroids and dose would you prescribe? Now, I personally feel like this first intervention may have been the biggest driver for practice change as it gave providers a chance to see how their prescribing practices compared to that of their peers. Second, we scheduled face-to-face -face educational meetings with our providers where we went over the results of the survey as well as educational components around the evidence of steroid prescribing in COPD patients. Now, in these education components, I do think it will be important for facilities to focus on literature illustrating the harms of steroid overprescribing. And then finally, we allowed our providers to select our third intervention, which would be reminders for sustainability. Ultimately, they selected prospective audit and feedback from a clinical pharmacist. However, empowering them with that choice may have facilitated buy-in and success of the overall program. Congratulations, Jennifer. It was a pleasure learning more about your work. Thank you, Kelly. Um, thank you for your time. And I would also like to thank the ASHP Foundation for this prestigious honor. It has truly been very rewarding. Thank you.